I got shocked with uh, 120 volts of electricity. Yeah, I would say the bearing went bad. There she is. Welcome to the Aquaculture Channel. Featuring my 1989 44-foot DeFever offshore cruiser. And myself, Ashley Ringlespa, AKA Captain Butch. Join me as we perform some boat maintenance and repairs and enjoy the benefits that come with this amazing lifestyle. I have been living aboard for the last 12 years and I look forward to sharing with you what I have learned and the experiences that happen along the way. This is the Aquacultured Life. And just like that, we're back. So today we have a cautionary tale about an old generator on an old boat. So as mentioned in previous videos, this boat came equipped with a 12 and a half kilowatt Westerbeek generator. It ran fine, started up fine, didn't smoke, didn't overheat, produced the power it needed to. It of course had some inherent maintenance items that needed to be taken care of. But what was lurking down the road with this generator, I did not see coming in the amount of work I had to put into it the money, the blood, sweat, and tears. A lot of what you see in this video was recorded several years ago when I first started working on this generator and everything that it put me through. So if you have an old boat with an old generator, you're definitely gonna wanna watch this and stay all the way to the end so you can see how much I spent on this generator, what it took, and you're gonna wanna stay all the way to the end to see what this cost, what it put me through, and if I recommend, if you have an issue with your generator, if it's worth fixing it or just replacing it. And of course, follow me on Instagram, aqua underscore cultured. Like, subscribe, hit that bell so you know I'm posting more videos. And let's get on with the show. All right, well, so here's the generator. Um, right here is where the exhaust manifold usually goes. And... Um, Here's the old one sitting in a bucket. Um, you can see this powdery crap here. Um, you can see that uh, the manifold developed a little pinhole and was uh, leaking uh, coolant into the exhaust area there. And uh, you can see the previous owners have patched this thing up over and over again and it was just starting to fail. You can see the powdery stuff coming out there. That's the coolant just slowly seeping out and then uh, let's attach the exhaust elbow and I ordered this brand new setup here nice and shiny it wasn't too easy to get because um, this is a, a Westerbeek from 1989 so had to source the part it took a little while but unfortunately you have to have a special uh, adapter plate here to go from here to attach to that and that didn't come with my new manifold so had to order that new uh, and while my mechanic was at it he wiggled my fresh water pump which goes right there it was a little loose and uh, so he determined that the bearings were starting to go and this thing was going to start to fail and lo and behold there was a little leak underneath it see all that bare area the paint has worn away over time that's from the coolant leaking out so why not I went ahead and ordered a new fresh water pump and new hoses that go to and from the heat exchanger and then also the thermostat housing you can see it's all corroded away there could have gotten by with it but while we're at it might as well replace it so I ordered a new one of these so we'll remove this thermostat housing remove the thermostat and um, we should be all good so pretty much the entire um, closed loop coolant system will be new and uh, I've already got a relatively new raw water pump so that's good got a new exhaust hose that's all hooked up and uh, I've already uh, acid treated the heat exchanger to clear out all the scale and junk out of there. So once all this is done, this generator should be uh, revived and running good. And uh, so 
It's got about 3,400 hours on it. Hopefully we'll get a lot more than that and uh, be reliable and not have to worry about it. So Finally, uh, going to be able to get the generator all fixed up again. I've been waiting for a part for, I don't know, three, four months now. Um, that Westerbeek had to recast the exhaust manifold. So they have originally got me one and it didn't fit. It was the wrong part so I had to take it back and then they had to source the other one and then uh, they couldn't find it in any of the stores across the US so they had to cast the part. So here she is. It's the exhaust manifold. All nice and shiny and Westerbeek red. This is the spacer plate that is going to space between the manifold and the head. And then while we're at it, we've got a new mixing elbow. We've got a new circulation pump that's going to go there. As the other one was starting to fail. Let's see, here's the old one. So the wheel started to have a little bit of a wiggle, so that meant the bearing was starting to go bad and it, it was actually starting to seep a little bit. So we got a new one of those. I went ahead and put a new impeller in. This is the old one. Uh, it's been in the boat since before I bought it over a year ago, so it looks pretty good. Here's the raw water pump. Just finished with that. We've got new hoses going to the exhaust manifold and the heat exchanger. There's a new hose here that's going to connect to the circulation pump. And then this is the thermostat housing. And I have a new one of those. Look at that guy all nice and shiny and a new thermostat and then while I was at it come over to the sea chest and here's the sea strainer valve which the cap was frozen on there so if I was underway and something got jammed in the sea strainer or I just needed to do a re routine cleaning. I couldn't do it without taking the whole uh, sea strainer apart which I've done now and I'm trying to free this cap off because it's frozen on there. I've used uh, some deep creep and PB blaster in there. I put it in the vise. It just doesn't want to budge so I'm resting a little bit and I'll go back at that. So um, definitely want to make sure you're your access caps to your sea strainers can come off for when you need them when you're underway because you don't want to be doing this when you are pitching and rolling. And so I went ahead and cleaned out the plastic housing, the strainer, and so once I get that cap off I'll put it all back together, hook the hose up, and hopefully the generator will be all good to go. Um, the engine on it is in good shape. Uh, hopefully the windings are still good and all the wiring is still good and I don't have to worry about that for a while. So this is pretty exciting. It's been taking so long and we'll finally be able to use the generator while we're out. And of course it's just in time for the cold fronts to start coming through. So. When we're out, we won't have to use the air conditioning as much, but whatever. Hey, the generator is operable. Got it all put back together. Well, almost. Just need to put the belt guard on. We'll go ahead and give you a tour of what we did. Finally got the exhaust manifold, the correct one that needed the spacer plate here. So that's all put back together there. We've got a new hose to the uh, coolant reservoir um, for, well, it's the expansion reservoir and it cleaned out that tank so we can see the level in it and then we've got a brand new mixing elbow and uh, we have new coolant hoses to and from the heat exchanger down here so this is a new hose then we have a new circulation pump and we had a little minor setback because when we got the pump 
it didn't have the pulley on there so we had to take the pulley off the old pump and put it on the new one and that required putting it on a press and getting it off of there and then we bolted the new one on and then went ahead and uh, put a new pencil zinc in the heat exchanger so that's all taken care of and we are good to go I was going to replace this um, the uh, thermostat housing and the thermostat the mechanic said it's fine for right now it's got another couple of years before we have to replace it because this is all seized up so we've actually got to cut this thing off and it's going to take some time to get that thing off of there so we're just going to run the life of this thing should be fine for quite a while and then now you can put the belt guard on the front and we'll call that a job well done and then we'll run it later and uh, put a load on it and we're happy about that so it's only been uh, almost a year that we haven't been able to use this generator because of this issue and uh, we're finally back in business all right what's up everybody so as you remember did some work on the generator recently well maybe last year and that involved the front end of the generator, which is the engine portion. We replaced the exhaust manifold, the mixing elbow. We uh, put a new freshwater circulation pump on there. And prior to that, I also replaced some seals on the fuel injection pump because that was leaky. So the front end, the engine section, the business section has been working really well. Starts right up, doesn't smoke, runs at the right RPM. And in the back of my mind, I knew that the back end, which is the generator part, the electric generation portion of the, the machinery, I hadn't taken a real close look to it. I haven't opened it up, which I probably should have. Um, now that needs to be addressed. So we are on our way back from downtown St. Petersburg, plugging along, had the air conditioning running and then all of a sudden the generator stopped producing electricity. The, the, inner, the engine was running fine, but the electricity, uh, can't speak, words are hard. So the electrical portion of the generator stopped producing power. So that meant that likely the armature, which is the portion that generates the electricity, had failed and what happened was the bearing failed, dropped the armature, and that thing got shredded up. So now we need to pull the armature off of the generator, get it to a specialist to rewind it, and put it back onto the generator, bolt it all back together, and hopefully that thing will be good for another 3,600 hours before any major work that needs to be done. So hopefully that's all that needs to be uh, worked on on that generator and everything goes smoothly but you know how it goes with boat work that never happens and all right so we got the back end off took some finesse so essentially had to just pry that thing back keep wedging screwdrivers in there to keep it going keep the wood underneath this back end because it's quite heavy and here's the armature so now we need to get that thing off of there yeah I would say the bearing went bad there she is what's left of her shred it up there's the balls that go in there and that goes on the end there goes back into that bell housing all the way back there and sure enough, that's what happened. So, bearing failed, dropped down, and tore some stuff up. So, I ended up taking the stator housing and the armature down to Broward Armature and Generator Repair down in Fort Lauderdale. I initially took it to Tampa Armature since it was a little closer, but they were unsure about taking on the job. So, ended up taking it down to Broward because they said no problem. It's going to cost about $2,700 plus tax and they actually just rebuilt some parts for a Westerbeek generator, so that would help speed things up. So I drove it down on a Monday. They took it apart, stripped everything down. They even sandblasted the stator housing. They 
rebuilt the armature, rebuilt the stator, and even repainted the uh, stator housing. Plus, they replaced all of the electrical connections on the back of the stator housing, which is amazing. And then they actually hooked it up to a machine, put a load on it, tested it, and gave me a written report. So it was amazing service. And they actually had it ready for me on Thursday. So it took them three days to do that. Extremely quick. They did a hell of a job. Definitely recommend them if you need a generator to be worked on. Check them out. They'll do very good work for you and are very helpful and friendly. I will put a link to their contact info below. So give Dan a call down there at Broward Armature. Okay, moment of truth. We're gonna go ahead and start her up. Or try to. Alright, so the preheat's working. I think we got something wired wrong. <laughs> So I think it has something to do with back here because it is a little bit different the way he has it set up. So we're going to uh, relook at that. What you didn't see there were some sparks, which definitely meant there was a problem. Indeed, the issue was in the back end with the electrical connections in which this generator can either run at 240 volts or 120 volts. And my system is set up for 120 volts and that there are a couple of jumper plates that were configured just like that so that it could run at 120 volts for my boat. But when Broward Armature rebuilt the stator, they positioned those jumper plates back to the 240 volts. And I noticed that the jumper plates were in a different position, but I didn't think much of it since they rebuilt everything. I thought that's just how it is now. I should have asked. That was an error on my part, and I paid dearly for it. So I just simply put the jumpers back where they should be, and I thought everything was all great. Everything's back together. The generator ran, and... Man, has this generator been a pain in my ass. So... As you recall, I had the back end of the generator rebuilt by Broward Armature. I reinstalled it. It was a big job. Spent about three grand. And the generator seemed to run fine. It was producing 120 volts, which this guy is set up for 120 volts at 60 hertz. Took the boat out a few times. And I went down to, um, to check the temperature on my stuffing box just below the generator. And I bumped into um, this fuel line here that goes to the generator and I got shocked with uh, 120 volts of electricity so that didn't seem right. So I started troubleshooting things um, and had my buddy come over who's an electrician. We were looking at possible ways that stray electricity could be occurring, improper grounding, whatever, um, and we've just found that there's got to be something going on in the back end that we can't see. So I've got to take this thing back apart, potentially take it back down to Fort Lauderdale, the Broward Armature. Um, hopefully it won't cost me much more. Hopefully I can find easily what that issue is. And then finally get this thing put back together. I'm ready to um, have a fully functioning generator again. The front end is fine. Um, the engine bits and pieces, they're great runs fine. Uh, it's just that back end that's really being a, uh, a pain. So uh, that's boat life. You got to deal with those things. You spend a lot of money, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, but um, if you stick with it, you can usually get through it. And um, I'm confident that I will get this generator back up to running the way it should, and I can go out and charge my batteries and not have to worry about it. So we'll see how it goes. So I took the back end of the generator apart again, put the armature and stator housing back into my truck, drove the three and a half hours down to Broward Armature in Fort Lauderdale for them to assess the situation. And they determined that the transformer, also known as the voltage regulator, had been burned up. So $1,200 later, I was back on my way to put things back together. So back down to the engine room we go, bolt everything back up to the block, and I noticed that something was a little bit off when I was putting things back together. So I pulled the back end off again and I noticed that I over torqued and broke the fan that's attached to the armature. So 
so I called my friends back down at Broward Armature and luckily they had a replacement fan and another $150 or $200 later they sent that up to me and I put everything back together. So after a total of five years of messing with this thing, I finally have a properly working generator. Well, that was fun. Not really, that really sucked. Um, that put me to the test. I mean, it took almost five years to get through that from start to finish and all the setbacks that I had. I spent about $6,500 in parts and having the repairs done alone. I don't know what I spent on the mechanic to help me out for a portion of it. And that doesn't include my time, which I don't know how many hours I spent uh, dealing with that generator getting the new parts, returning parts, reinstalling, pulling the generator apart, driving all the way down to Fort Lauderdale and back multiple times. So in the end, in hindsight, if I knew then what I know now, I probably would have just went ahead and replaced the generator. Yeah, the experience was probably invaluable. I did learn a ton. I've been through almost every system on that generator and I do have you know, a good generator now with a remanufactured back end. The front end is in good condition. It has all those nice new parts, but it's still a bit of a fr Frankenstein and it is an older engine. So I probably would have just sold what I had, tried to get what I could for it, maybe a couple thousand dollars because the engine was still in good shape, and then just buy a new smaller unit, something like an eight, eight and a half kilowatt generator because the 12 and a half is a little bit overkill for this boat. I mean, it was sized to pretty much run everything all at the same time and you just don't need that. So I would have liked to have had uh, something smaller in a sound shield maybe. And you know, those are the things you learn, that's life. And I'm not even done working on the generator yet. Yeah, it's functioning, it's working great, but there's still things that need to be addressed, like the engine mount for the generator is now corroded on one of the sides right underneath the raw water pump because of all the years that water has dripped down onto it. So I need to replace that entire rail and the engine mount. That thermostat housing, still haven't replaced that, so that's going to need to be addressed at some point. I'm probably going to get to the point where the heat exchanger is going to need to be replaced. I have acid treated it, but it will only get you so far until it's about to fail. So I'm going to have to get a new one of those. So really, I would have just rather have gotten a brand new generator. I could have done a lot of the labor myself of getting it out of here and getting a new one in and hooking it up. So I would have rather have gone down that road rather than spend five years of struggling with what I have. So take with that what you will. I know every situation is different. You gotta make up your own mind, but I know it is a common situation where you have an old generator, it's giving you problems, the back end fails, whatever, and you're stuck with the dilemma, do I replace it or do I fix it? So I hope this video was useful for you. If you do decide to keep your generator and rebuild the back end, my next video is going to be on that process. So I will show you more detail on how I went about disconnecting everything, removing that back end, getting the, the remanufactured part back in place and reinstalled, and make sure you have it wired correctly so that you don't screw up all the work and money you just put into it. So I hope this was very helpful for you. Definitely stay tuned for the next video. Of course, follow me on Instagram, aqua underscore cultured. Like the video, subscribe, hit that bell so you know when I do post the next video. Thanks so much for watching. And of course, if you're not floating, you're sinking. So stay afloat, my friends. photos of where everything goes. Even when you take photos, sometimes it's not so clear.